Hello, welcome back to Algebra 1. Here we're going to talk about the very important concept of subtraction um, of real numbers. Now, I know that you guys have all um, uh, learned what subtraction is, but here when we talk about subtracting real numbers, we're going to have negative and positive numbers. So the basic idea that you need to understand is that you've kind of been exposed to this a little bit already. Because when you take the concept of A minus B, two numbers, a number A uh, minus another number B, right? What that really is in terms of algebra is A plus a negative B. A plus a negative B. Now if you can remember that, then all of these problems are going to be simple because you already know how to add negative and positive numbers. We've already talked about that in the previous section. So in this case we have uh, a case where uh, we have e could be A could be positive or negative, and we have negative sign here, and we're adding them together, and we've done lots of problems like that. Now I'm telling you is that anytime you subtract, the, perform the operation of subtraction, it's the same thing as adding the negative number, which makes sense when you think about it, because when you add something negative, you're kind of going left on the number line. You're basically taking it away, because when you have a negative number, it's like debt. It's like something you don't have. It's something you owe. So when you add negative, you're kind of going left, which is like subtraction on the number line. So let's throw some numbers into it, and I think it'll be very, very clear what we're talking about. All right, so for instance, kindergarten math here, right? 5 minus 3. Not kindergarten math, but something that you've seen many, many times. I know that you know the answer is 2. But in terms of algebra, this is the same thing as 5 plus a negative 3, right? So even though you know by looking at this the answer is 2, now we're showing you that you can write it as the addition of a negative number. And so you know how to do this. Remember, when, you have, when you're have when you adding a negative and positive number, you automatically subtract the numbers, and then the sign goes with the larger absolute value. So the 5 minus 3 is going to be 2, and the sign of the answer goes with the larger absolute value, which is positive. So the answer to this is 2. Now you already knew the answer here because it's a very simple problem. Similarly, if we had 10 minus 2, it's the same kind of thing. That's 10 plus negative 2. 10 plus a negative 2, like that. Um, anytime you have a subtraction, it can be written as the addition of a negative number. And then to, in order to solve this, in terms of how we've done the previous problems, anytime you're adding uh, two different signs, positive and negative, together, you just subtract them. 10 minus 2 gives you 8. And the sign of the answer goes with the large or absolute value, which in this case was positive. So the answer is 8, which is exactly what you already know from this simple problem. Uh, that we had before. Now we're going to work something that's going to show you why it's important to, 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 uh, to understand what we're talking about here. For instance, if you have negative 7 minus 4, how would you handle that? You see, this is not a kindergarten subtraction problem because you have negative 7 and you're subtracting a number from it, so how do you handle it? Well, if you just apply the rule, this is the same thing as negative 7 plus a negative 4. Anytime you're subtracting numbers like this, you can write it as plus a negative. And now you look at this, and you already know how to do this, because now you're adding a negative to another negative. And the rule for that was you just add the number 7 plus 4 is going to give you 11. And negative plus negative always remains negative. Now this kind of makes sense because you can look at it two ways. You have negative seven dollars in your bank account, it means you, you owe the bank seven bucks. And you borrow four more dollars because you're, you're adding negative money to it. So you're borrowing even more money, so the answer should be more negative. Same thing if you look at this. You already had negative seven dollars, you already owed money, and you subtract from that. You go in the hole even deeper, four more dollars, so the answer should be more negative. And it is. So we're just going to crank through and do a bunch of these little, little problems here. And after a while, you will get the hang of this. So 4 minus 8, the concept of 4 minus 8. Now, this is something you can't really do in third, third grade math because you have a number and you're subtracting from it a larger number. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, 4 minus 4 is 0. So if you take 4 and subtract even more than that, then the answer should be negative. And let's, it, let's see, it should, it should work out that way. So this will be 4 plus negative 8. 4 plus a negative 8. All right? And because the subtraction can be written as plus minus, now you have a situation we've already done before. When you add a positive and a negative number, you just subtract them. So 8 minus 4 is 4, and the sign matches the sign of the larger absolute value. In this case, it's negative, so the answer is negative 4. And we just said a minute ago that we expect the answer to be negative, because here, you start with 4 and you subtract 8, so you go past 0, 4 more past 0 the other direction, giving you negative 4. 
Now, so far what we've done is I've given you some subtraction problems and I've shown, showed you how to write them as addition, adding a negative. That's always going to work. You can just kind of remember that, use it. It's always going to work. But you can go the other direction as well. So, for instance, in an algebra problem, if you were given 2 plus negative 3, you already know how to solve this. Of course, we've already done that many times in the last section. But when you see... Uh, when you see plus minus right next to each other, then that can be written as subtraction. You're basically going the other direction, 2 minus 3. These two things, this and this, are exactly the same thing. So however it's easier for you to solve the problem, you just do it. I mean, I, I like looking at this, and I see I'm, I'm adding a positive and a negative, so I subtract them. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value, which is the negative 3, so I get negative 1. Now you can look at it this way too. You could start with 2 and you're subtracting more than you have. So how far negative are you going to go? It's going to be negative 1 because 2 minus 2 is 0 and you're actually subtracting one more than that. So the answer was going to be negative 1. All right. What if you had 6 plus uh, negative 10? I'm just trying to teach you that you can write when you see plus and minus right next to each other, it can be written as 6 minus 10. And however you want to think about it, it's fine. I'm going to look and say, well, I'm adding these two guys together. They're different signs, so I just subtract them. Six, uh, 10 minus 6 is 4, and the sign is going to match the larger absolute value. So it's going to be negative 4, like this. All right, now what if you have negative 1 plus negative 6? Same thing. I can write that as negative 1 minus 6. And how do I handle this? Well, if I look at this, I can look either way I want, but I'm going to look here and say, well, I'm adding two negative numbers. So uh, what you do is you add the absolute value. 6 plus 1 is 7, and you add negative to another negative. You always get a negative answer. And you can look at it this way. Negative 1, subtracting 6 more, going in the hole 6 more, means I'm going to owe somebody $7 at the end of the day. So I already started out owing $1. Now I borrow 6 more. Last one here in this little batch, negative 7 plus... Negative 1, negative 7 plus negative 1 can be written as negative 7 minus 1. It's the same story. We're adding two negative numbers together, so we just add them 8, and we always keep the negative sign. Negative plus negative always gives us positive. So the same sort of thing. All right, now here, the next part of this lesson, we're going to teach you something that you'll use over and over and over and over and over again. Um, you will encounter it in so many different types of problems. Basically, in algebra, when you have two negative signs together, they make a positive. So for instance, if I have negative and then I open a parenthesis and I have negative 3 inside, see what's happening here is I've got negative 3 in here, but then I've got another negative sign sitting right out in front of it. And this basically is going to be equal to the 3. And, and the way this works is that the two negatives, when they sit right next to each other, they kind of annihilate each other. Two negatives together kind of make a positive. And the way that you can think about that, just to kind of remember it, is from English class, you might have heard of the concept of a double negative. D double negative. Generally, you don't ever want to have double negatives in English, right? But an example of a double negative would, would be, I don't uh, not want candy. All right, now you see what's happening here. This is a negative word, but right next to it's another negative word. What does the sentence mean? I don't not want candy, right? If you don't want candy, that means you don't want it. But if you don't not want candy, it really means that I want candy. Right? That's what that really means. So you see, when you have two, even in English, when you have two negatives right next to each other, it kind of makes the sentence positive. I don't not want candy means I really actually want candy. So here, I don't not want three, right? So these kind of annihilate and make it positive three. So the bottom line is, if you want to remember it this way or however you want to remember it, fine. But when you have two negatives sitting right next to each other, it always just makes positive. So I'll show you a couple of quick examples of this, and we're, we're going to do this a lot here in the future. If you have 2 minus negative 9, right, you can immediately write that as 2 plus 9. The two negatives just make a positive, and 9 plus 2 is 11. So that would be the answer to that. Right? What if you had negative 3 minus negative 2? 
then the two negatives that sit right next to each other would be a positive. So negative 3 plus 2. Now you have to add these together, right? So you're adding a negative and a positive. So what do you do? You subtract them. 3 minus 2 is 1, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value. In this case, a larger absolute value is the negative 3. So the answer is negative 1. All right, what if you had just a couple more here? Negative 17 minus negative 4. Again, you'll have negative 17, and then the two negatives will make a positive 4. And so at the end of the day, you're going to add these guys together. You're adding two different signs, so you end up subtracting it. 17 minus 4 is going to give you 13, and the sign goes with the larger absolute value because the negative 17 is larger absolute value, so the answer is going to be negative. And here's our final problem of this lesson. What if you have 9 minus negative 21? The two negatives sitting right next to each other just make a positive. 9 plus 21, and of course 9 plus 21 is 30. And that's, that's the uh, answer to that question. So in this lesson, we've covered a lot of material. We've learned how to subtract numbers. The main thing you need to know is that when you have subtraction, you've kind of done it already. When you're adding negative no numbers before, that really is the same operation as subtraction because when you have subtraction, it's the same as adding a negative. And you can go the other way. If you're adding a negative, it's the same as subtraction. And if you have two negatives sitting right next to each other, you just always make that positive. And I know that may seem a little bit weird, but it kind of follows this rule of English that we kind of uh, deal with. Now, follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to get a lot more practice with this concept here of subtracting real numbers in algebra.